Hey guys, this video is to introduce you to the virtual lab on stoichiometry and the coefficients of chemical reactions. This um, interface here is visible um, online and how to get there is detailed in the lab itself. Assuming once you get there, this is the screen you're going to see. The first thing you should do is read the problem description. And when you read the problem description, it tells you that you have four substances, unknowns, A, B, C, and D, and that they react in some weird way. Your job is to figure out which of these substances actually react with each other, as well as what is the balanced chemical equation or the stoichiometric coefficients, the numbers in front, of the substances in a balanced chemical reaction. Of course, because these are unknown substances, you're not going to use actual chemical formulas, but simply A, B, C, and D, and you're trying to figure out which of these two react. To get rid of this screen, you're going to press that. Now notice that on the left is where you have your chemicals, and this is considered your stock room you have water as well as four solutions and on the top you have retrieve problem description if you want to go back and look at that again you could also do it by clicking below you could rename your workbench although I don't see any need for us to do that for the tools we have the different glassware you'll be using you have them all listed here you also have instruments available to you, Bunsen burner, weighing boat, scales, the viewer, um, just leave all of these checked for now, transfer bar, we're going to leave this at precise transfer so don't change that, the view you can change your um, you know the background colors here, I'm going to leave it with this nice what they call metal although it's some sort of purpley version, help, you can get some help with what um, these different functions are. Now this right here refers to, um, whoops, this looks like this is the, that's awfully odd. I want to go back to the workbench. And here on the workbench, what I have are um, the different things that I can take out. If I want to take a 250 milliliter beaker, I click here. And get that. If I wanted instead a thousand mil beaker, if I wanted a graduated cylinder, I click on it and it appears on my workbench. However, I'm going to move these down here a little bit, and what I'm going to put on whoa, what I'm going to put on top um, are my solutions, and I'm going to move one of each of these over to the workbench. Solution A, solution B, solution C and solution D. Now what I would recommend is taking a look at this panel on the right. We have used molarity in the past but instead we're going to switch this to moles for what we're doing and just be sure that this says moles the whole time. Check that periodically. I think that once you pull that down it should be consistent throughout. Now you're trying to figure out which of these chemicals react and then by mixing different amounts of them and looking at the result which appears over on the right you're going to be determining um, which to react as well as what the balanced stoichiometric ratio is now when we're pouring chemicals into different beakers and different containers there's, there are different ways to do this um, something that we haven't really used in our lab we don't really have these are called pipettes but these is, this is the best way to transfer, transfer volume. I'm going to take a 10 milliliter pipette and I'm going to show you how this volume transfer works. Instead of using a graduated cylinder, which is still very good, the pipette is the best. So I want to take a certain amount of solution A. Now there are pipettes of different volumes, but in this case I'm choosing the 10 milliliter pipette. Now this is good for only 10 milliliters and you get exactly 10 milliliters. I'm going to move this whole system down and when I want to take something out of this solution A 
Notice that that green plus forms. If I move it away, not there anymore. As soon as I see the green plus, that lets me know that these two things are connected. And then over here on the right, I get a, um, a nice indicator as to the volume. Notice there are no other numbers because the 10 milliliter pipette is only good for that exact 10 milliliters. Down at the bottom is how I transfer. Transfer amount, and then it says parentheses mils. So I am going to transfer exactly 10 milliliters. In fact, that's all I really should transfer with this. And then I check withdrawal and I get exactly 10, the bottom of my meniscus as at 10. And I want to put it here in a beaker. I hold it over the beaker until I saw that plus. Do you see the plus right there? And now I don't want to suck the solution up. I want to put the solution into the beaker. And I do that by transferring all 10 mils like this. And I do pour. When I do that, Notice that nothing over here changed in particular. When I look at solution A, and I click on solution A, this is substance A here. In the blue are H plus as well as OH minus. And these, if I were to click on the molarity, as you remember from last year, are both 1 times 10 to the negative 7 molar right? Moles per liter is molarity. And this is the pH of a neutral solution. And it's a one molar solution of A. But I really want to be following the moles here. And um, the moles in this case are going to change from that one times 10 to the negative seven because the volume changes. However, it's still just substance A. If you click on that red here, it's still just substance A. And this is how many moles I have. So this is how many moles I have in my 10 milliliters of solution. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, this is how many moles I have left after I took the 10 mils out. If I go here, notice that the moles of A have dropped because, in fact, I have less of it. Nine times 10 to the negative two, and then over here, one times 10 to the negative two. I can also choose to mix solution A with solution B by repeating this process. And when I do that, I'm going to move this over here a little bit. I'm going to put this over, and then I'm going to click down here, 10 milliliters, withdraw. I am now going to put it back into the beaker, and I'm going to mix these two. And I'm going to pour all of it, 10 milliliters, and I'm going to pour. When I look at what's in the beaker, notice that it's A and B. Now this is my indication that nothing has happened because I have both A and B in the same amounts as when I started. So really, I haven't done anything. I can look for a solid, but there are no solids that appear. The pH stays at 7. I still have the same amounts of reactants. This would be an example of no reaction. Your job is to plan and execute an experiment in which you determine the stoichiometric ratios between the two that actually do react. I have embedded some instructional videos, tutorials. If you don't remember um, the details of stoichiometry and wanted to review those, those are in the handout. So please refer to the handout to get um, some background information. Another thing you should note, you can relabel things. If I wanted to relabel this beaker to know what I put into it, I can rename it here. And I could call this, I believe I added A plus B. And this lets me know so I don't get too confused. Just like you might label beakers with a piece of tape, you can label this with, um, with um, some text. Another thing you can do is you can remove the liquid in the beaker. You can duplicate items once you've moved them out here onto your workbench. Thermal properties. Um, you can measure the temperature. You could change the temperature of the solution if you'd like. You could insulate it from the surroundings. The temperature is also indicated here, so you don't need to do that per se to measure. Taking a second look over at the other equipment that you have, don't forget um, you have these things, Bunsen burners, weighing boats, and scales. Remember the weighing boat is for measuring solids onto the scale.
Now, just because all of these things are here does not mean that you need to use every single piece of this equipment. Please look at the handout, read the directions thoroughly. You do, I do expect you guys to play around with this a little bit and to um, get your feet wet, so to speak, and figure out um, just how to mix things before you get started with the formal lab. So a certain amount of play is expected. But if you run into any problems or questions, just call me over to your work area and I'm happy to help. That's the end of this instructional video.